Like if I were sitting in the right seat evaluating you on one trip around the pattern, what are the things that I'd be looking for that told me this person is definitely a safe pilot? I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to The Finer Points. So a few years ago I had a student who was certificated go down to Hawaii to rent an airplane on his vacation and an old time CFI flew around the pattern twice with him and then signed him off and said, you're good to go. And he came back and told me that he was just horrified that that was the worst airplane checkout that he could ever possibly imagine. And it's just a good thing that he's a, a sharp pilot because, you know, it turns out he's safe. But how could the guy know that? I just want to be really clear. I would never do that checkout. I would never check somebody out with just two trips around the pattern. However, it did get me thinking, what can you tell about a pilot from the perfect traffic pattern? The very first thing is, how do you show up? Do you, you know, do you show up with charts? Do you sit down in the airplane and have solid procedures? Are you doing a pre-taxi briefing? Are you doing a passenger briefing? What level of professionalism are you even bringing to the game before we start the airplane and, and get the whole process going? That really, really matters. Another thing is during taxi, and you could probably break this up into three or four little things, but let's just consider, are you on the center line? Are you riding brakes? Are you positioning the flight controls for the effects of wind? Are you testing your instruments, doing taxi turns? Taxi turns, as I go to the right, my turn coordinator shows a turn to the right, ball moves outside, numbers increase, attitude is stable. When I go to the left, the turn coordinator shows a turn to the left, ball moves outside, numbers decrease, attitude is stable. So consider now that we might have a pilot, that, that is you here, who's got solid procedures, who's got great taxi procedures. What else can we learn from just one trip around the pattern? And by the way, you guys, if you don't know these procedures, passenger briefing, taxi turns, all this stuff, uh, it's all in our ground school app where you can basically fly with me. There's a whole flight side to that app. Um, and if you, you don't want to get the whole thing, you can just download it. There's a free trial. You can learn all the procedures that I just mentioned and then cancel if you like. There's a link in the description if you'd like to check that app out. It's for experienced pilots, beginning pilots, uh, anybody who thinks they could benefit from flying with me because everything I know is going into that app. Okay, so we get into the run-up area. Is this pilot getting ahead of the airplane, right? Before it even starts moving, is there any kind of redundancy to the run-up? Is there a, a pre-takeoff briefing? All right, so let's go ahead and do our pre-takeoff briefing. Today we're departing runway 25. We have 4,657 feet available. The winds are light. It's a slight tailwind, but it's a matter of three or four knots. And we're going downhill. If we don't have 70% of our rotation speed by the first taxiway, we are going to power back and stop on the runway. Another thing is getting out onto the runway. Do they check the final approach path? Do they use the full length of the runway? And are they able to hold the center line as they add power and begin the takeoff roll? The next thing I think I'm looking for is when that airplane leaves the ground, is it just, does it just yaw left on them, you know? Or are they right there with rudder? Are they there to compensate for that increased left turning tendency as the airplane leaves the ground? That tells me a lot. That tells me their feet are in the game. They know they're thinking in front of the airplane uh, and they're able to sort of anticipate what the airplane's gonna do and stay in front of it. Another thing, are they setting sight pictures and then confirming the airspeed? That is, are they using the Lindbergh reference uh, or are they chasing the airspeed indicator or are they failing to hold V why at all. Here in the climb, I'm focusing on my Lindbergh reference, right? I'm looking right here, trying to figure out what sight picture is going to hold my 74 knots, my VY, my best rate of climb. Are they tracking the extended center line of the runway, right? So are we now climbing on the extended center line uh, at a sight picture that holds VY? 
Uh, and are we using enough right rudder so that the airplane isn't yawing left? Or are they lazy with their feet and compensating with aileron, right? So we want to see all of this good stuff. Think about all of the things I just mentioned, how that adds up. You know, this is, it's unlikely that a pilot who's doing all of these things is going to go out and mess up steep turns or slow flight. I would still check, just to be clear, but it's unlikely. When they get up into the downwind, another thing, are they positioned correctly? Like, you know, are you far enough away from the runway? In a Cessna, you've got a great indicator. If you're sitting on the same side as the of the airplane as the runway is on, then the runway should appear to cut halfway through your strut. If you're on the other side of the airplane, the opposite side than the runway, it should appear two thirds up your strut. Okay, so are you the right distance away from the runway? Then of course, after the abeam position, when we you know, set the power in this example, I'm doing power off approaches, but wherever you set your power, set your flaps, are you able to hold airspeed consistently, right? Do we have a progressive slowdown? Is it 85 on the downwind, 75 on the base, 65 on final? Or are you one of those people that just flies 85 all the way around and slows down on final, right? These, uh, this all says a lot about who you are as a pilot. Now, if I were really uh, doing this two pattern, you know, two loops around the pattern checkout, I would for sure make the first pass a go around and I would wait until you were all the way down into ground effect. Okay, I'm gonna get right up here in the flare, let the energy bleed off just a little bit right before my wheels hit. I'm gonna say I don't like it. Full power, right rudder, flaps 10. Nevada County traffic, Skyhawk 5218 Foxtrot going around, 25 Nevada County. All right, look at that. That's practice right there. Going right back to our Lindbergh reference so we can see exactly the sight picture we need to maintain the airspeed that we want. An important distinction. <laughs> Don't be chasing the airspeed. If you can do all of the things that I've mentioned in this, you know, uh, little example of the perfect traffic pattern, it's very unlikely that you're going to go out there and make mistakes on other maneuvers that I check, you know, slow flight, power off stalls, simulated engine failures, steep turns. So again, while I would never, and I'll just say it third time, I would never accept a simple two loop around the pattern checkout. I don't know if that was the worst airplane checkout ever. And hopefully this will inspire you to perfect your traffic pattern procedures. There's a lot you can get out of just one simple circuit around the pattern. Uh, and this is a great uh, opportunity for you to stay proficient, to go out and practice the skills that you need to stay safe, stay sharp, and fly your best.